what's going on everybody and today we have a video on general assembly and farming for that holster now I'm gonna be using the same build that I've been using just for my speed runs it's gonna be revolved around an RPK and an M249B and I'm also using the Barrett's bulletproof vest an Alpha Bridge mask Alpha Bridge knee pads an Alpha Bridge holster Savage gloves and an Alpha Bridge backpack now you could substitute the Alpha Bridge knee pads for a pair of accomplished knee pads and that'll get you to your field proficiency caches faster and they have a chance to drop the holster in any name gear piece. The talents on the two LMGs put together are meticulous, skilled, ferocious, destructive, competent, and commanding. As always, destructive and ferocious and competent are going to give me a lot of damage in PvE content meticulous commanding and skilled are all going to work together to where I can keep my ultimate up as long as possible and get it back as fast as possible every time I get a kill with my ultimate up commanding will proc and it'll extend the duration now every headshot kill that I get is going to give me my ultimate back faster meticulous is going to make it so that I don't have to reload as often with my ultimate pop all of these put together in combination working together make it so I can do a ton of damage for a very long time and then after it goes on cooldown I can get it back extremely quickly to continue that duration and continue that damage now what's really good about the holster is the holster is mainly a pistol build item what it does is every shot with the pistol increases your damage by two percent now it does not state that it has to be on the same target however through testing and everything it has to be 10 shots on the same target or any consecutive shots have to be on the same target or else it'll reset now after you hit the 10th shot your target will be EMP'd which is very useful in PvP as it allows you to make the enemy player not use their skills or their ultimate the holster is actually a very good item what it also does is through testing I found out is that every shot you get with the pistol ups your damage by 2% but it also translates to your main guns so if you were to run a Predator's Mark 4 piece and then the Bliss holster and the Barrett's chest piece if you get 8 shots with your pistol on the same enemy player and then switch to your main primary gun on Predators that main primary gun is going to have 2% for every shot you hit on the same target with your pistol. If you get two shots on your on the target with your pistol, your main primary gun will go up by 4% damage wise. So this can equate to quite a bit. Through some testing last night, I was actually able to get the build where I use an AK-47, I was able to get it up to nearly 34k base damage. Now using an MDR, I was close to getting it up to around 40k base damage. This holster is very, very important for a lot of people and a lot of people's builds. And even if you don't want the holster, it's actually pretty cool to have just because it's a novelty item and it's a named gear piece. So it's more of a novelty than anything for me as I don't really have much use for it other than testing. So on with this run, this run could have been a little bit faster. I could have skipped a whole bunch of parts, however I wasn't able to. This mission is already a little bit of a lengthy mission due to the parts where you have to wait, you have to hit controls, you have to input stuff into computers, you have to wait on an echo to activate. So this mission is actually a very lengthy mission, so there's not really any way to speed run it or speed farm it other than what I do here. I go as fast as I can given certain parameters. So we're already moving. I mean, this mission took me about 12 and a half minutes, so it was definitely a little bit longer. I don't really need to do it anymore, though, because doing survival, I've actually gotten two of the Bliss holsters through survival. But this is a mission that's mainly for those that are wanting the holster and don't want to do survival and grind survival for it. So I go ahead and pop my ultimate at this part because I know that there's a lot of NPCs here that I can kill so I can keep my ultimate going. If I do happen to land the headshot kill, I can actually get the ultimate back extremely quick with this part as well. So I know as soon as I kill this guy right here, there's going to be two shotgunners and a shield guy as long as you're solo that are going to spawn right here. Instantly with the shield guy, you want to go for his back because that will automatically take his health and his armor down about halfway to where you only have to put a couple of shots in him. And I try to aim for the head to make sure I get the headshot kill. Now these two guys that spawn right here, you can skip them. However, I wanted to go ahead and restock because I wasn't too sure if I was going to make it to the next restock box with the amount of ammo that I had. So I went ahead and restocked. When you're going for the turret controls, you want to take this route. 
basically you want to take the route that's not going to get you stumble or make you fall. This route that I have found makes it so that the turrets can't hit you and trip you up or make you stumble, whereas if you go any other route that I have found, the turrets can hit you and make you stumble, slowing your time. So all I want to do is hit that, and then exactly, this is one of the only parts that I'm going to say this in this game, but you actually want to listen to Captain Benitez and let the JTF handle the rest of the people. Don't worry about the courtyard. The JTF can hold it. Take point at the General Assembly. Bliss is your target. Take him down fast. <laughs> onto the next part which is a small hallway part but it's the part that actually takes one of the longest amounts of time because you have to wait on the echo so one of the things that you can do at this part if you want to speed it up is you can pop your ultimate if you want to right here i decide not to because he's already going to try to place down his support station but i'm able to catch him which is an easy kill the rest of these are pretty easy kills So that guy right there, he kind of moves around and I'm not able to land the shots directly on him to keep going as fast as I really wanted to. However, as soon as I get the kill, I head over to where I know the echo is going to be. Let that animation start going because that's going to take a while. And then you have to go and hit this door panel to open up the door. Now this next part is one of the other parts that you want to pop your damage ult. So what you want to do is run down the beginning stairs right here. You want to pop it because you know you're going to keep it going, focusing on the AI, and you're going to leave the boss to last. Now you can go for headshot kills to get it back sooner if you want. However, I just decided to go straight in and just start killing because I don't want it to time out on me and I know I'm going to be able to keep it going. Right here is the first boss. This mission has three bosses in it. The next two guys, after I kill him, you can skip them. They're not required. However, since I notice that they are moving pretty slowly, I go ahead and kill them because I know I can get the two headshot kills on them and get my ultimate back faster. This next part in this hallway, you can actually skip as well, except I normally take out the shotgunner because he will follow you and he is kind of a pain. I luckily get the headshot kill on him, which procs skilled and makes me get my ultimate back even faster. Agent, we whipped on Bliss, but his command staff might still be in the General Assembly. Head that way and engage. Now, the next room is the big room. I throw the grenade off because I'm not really used to seeing this kind of a spawn. There's two shotgunners and a healer. Normally, the healer is in the middle or back on the podium, and the two shotgunners are on the sides of him. However, this time, they weren't. Now, when you're solo, there's going to be two shotgunners that spawn at the next spot. Then you're going to have to run upstairs, and there's a healer and a sniper. I kill the healer really quickly because he can be a pain, and then I turn around and kill the shotgunner that I skipped down below. The sniper is the last priority because you can just run right up to them. They're very easy to take out. After you clear this entire wave up top, the next thing is one of the other worst parts. Yes, you get to see the map of the DZ, however, you're sitting here waiting for the computer to start. As soon as you hit that, pop out a grenade and throw it at the very top left of the stairs because that's where the next AI are going to spawn, as you can see right here. This is the next spot that you want to pop your damage ult because these AI right here and the next AI that are going to spawn on the right side are on a path. They have a waypoint path out to them, so they are going to take it. Those AI were trying to go down the stairs to their path, but I interfered with it. These next AI are going to come right here to where I am aiming because I know that their waypoint is right there on their path. They're all going to come right there. So it's very easy for me to just set up and get ready for the headshot kills and just line it right up so I can get it very easily. Now I go ahead and do a restock right here just in case I need some more ammo. I also go ahead and go to my menu and switch to the recovery link because I'm seeing that I only have one med kit and I know that my skill power is not that high to keep my booster shot constantly going. And this is one of the parts that you really want to keep your heal and your med kits because this is the part where the helicopter is going to hit you and it will hit hard and it is non-stop. So right here you're waiting on the door to open up which takes up more time. Overall, in this entire mission, you lose about a minute, a minute and a half waiting on things. 
Lieutenant Colonel Charles Bliss. And I tell you, we will not fall this day. We are soldiers. We have survived the virus. I accidentally pop a water right here. I meant to pop a soda. So I could have shot the helicopter with the water, but you don't do that much damage solo. What you want to do is hit the controls are going to be your main thing. Now, I'm already at a disadvantage because my heal isn't going to be up all the time. I've just used my last med kit, so now I'm really, really watching my health. I run over to the next controls. You got to hit those, and then I hit two more controls. The last two controls are going to be the end of the helicopter. The second control gets its armor almost all the way off. The third control that you're going to hit is going to take the armor all the way off and do a little bit of damage to the health. The fourth turret that you're going to hit, which is going to be the last, is going to put his health really, really low, and you can finish him off with just straight DPS. Now, earlier in the mission, I listened to the actual Captain Benitez and left a whole bunch of AI or NPCs down here, which kind of came back to bite me right here. Because there's a lot of NPCs, they really do start to hurt. So I go ahead and kill a couple of them just to make sure I can get my recovery link back because I know I'm going to need it for this next part. I go over, I hit the turret controls, which are the last ones, and right here is where my recovery link came into play and helped me. So as you can see, the helicopter is about to go down. I just go ahead and finish it off with straight gun DPS. And then all it is is clearing out a few of the AI or NPCs. Now you don't have to kill all of them, which I didn't really know about until I actually made this video. What you can do is you only have to kill a few of them, if any. Because what it's going to tell you, as you can see right here, is I've beat Colonel Bliss. Now eliminate the LMB. I killed one LMB and it's telling me the mission is complete. So you don't have to kill all of them. So after I kill this guy, I'll go ahead and let you guys finish off the video by seeing the loot that I get, seeing it on the ground real quickly. I didn't really get anything good. Like I said, I don't really need the holster because I have two of them from survival. That's it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments what you want to see next. If you have a Colonel Bliss holster, what kind of a build are you using it with? How do you like it? And also don't forget to check out Upper Echelon Gamers on Twitter, Facebook, and their YouTube. And make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.